Well, Mark and I are back at Twin Ponds Park in Shoreline, and we're going to demonstrate, Mark's going to demonstrate doing a proof using identity. So Mark, let's look at this argument, and we'll assume that M is an individual constant standing for the proper name Mark Twain. Okay. We'll let S be an individual constant standing for the proper name Samuel Clemens. So the first premise says what? Mark Story or Mark Twain. <laughs> Mark Twain is identical to Samuel Clemens. Exactly. They're one and the same person. They don't look alike, they do, but they're actually one and the same being. So this is the uh, sense of identity we use in logic to say that one thing is the same thing as, to say that uh, M and S are one and the same thing, not two different things. So then this this is uh, the, the capital letter W will be a predicate constant standing for the predicate is a writer. Okay. So this says Mark Twain is a writer. And then the conditional, the capital A is going to be a predicate constant standing for is an author. That's kind of tautological, isn't it? <laughs> oh well. It's okay. So this says, uh, what's it say? Well, if Samuel Clemens is a writer, then Samuel Clemens is an author. Look here, we have Mark Twain is a writer. Okay. And we're going to conclude that Mark Twain is an author. Okay, so uh, tell me what to do and I'll write down the inferences. I might initially think that I would want to do a modus ponens, mm -hmm. but WM is not the same thing as WS, so I really can't do a modus ponens right. there. I've got a couple choices. Uh, the statement up here, the identity statement, lets me swap M's out for S's. Pretty much it will. Uh -huh. One thing I could do is... That's the first rule of identity. First rule of identity. I could use a Leibniz law uh, to replace oh, a, this M Pardon me. That, I, I'm sorry. I misspoke. It's the second rule of identity. Continue. Yeah, okay. But we can swap M for S yeah. anywhere in the thing. So I could swap that M out and turn it into an S. Or I could swap these S's out and turn them into M's. Just for simplicity's sake, let's do LL, Leibniz Law, on lines one and two. Okay. So for line four, what I'm thinking is, if Mark Twain is a writer, and Mark Twain is the same thing as Samuel Clemens, it should follow that Samuel Clemens is a writer. So I'd write WS. Okay. And I justify it with one, two, Leibniz Law. Leibniz's, Leibniz's Law, one, law applied to one and two. Yeah. So the logic then is that since Mark Twain is the same, one of the same person, uh, individual as Samuel Clemens. Uh, if Mark Twain is a writer, we can interchange the M and S and, and infer that Samuel Clemens is a writer. Because whatever is true of M will be true of S if M and S are in, what, indeed one and the same in, individual. Okay? And now I can do the modus ponens. If WS is true, then AS is. And WS is true, therefore AS. Okay. Uh, we apply ponens, modus ponens three, four. to three and four. And that should be straightforward by now. And that's saying Samuel Clements is an author. Mm -hmm. And again, M and S are identical, so I can exchange M for S and S for M. So I can do Leibniz Law on line five with one. Mm -hmm. That would give me a M, the conclusion. Okay. We're swapping S for M, keeping everything else the same. So Mark Twain is an author. That would be Leibniz Law. Assuming Leibniz's Law. One five. Applied to lines one and five. And we're done. And we've derived it. So, good. I hope that helps you with identity proofs.